A very warm welcome to IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. I'm Ritpika Gupta. Today we are focusing on India's electronics manufacturing industry, speaking to one of the most innovative and established manufacturers of remote controls and payment devices. We're also talking to a global company in the HVACR industry. In the first segment, we get chatting with Prashant Bhatia, co-founder and CFO LIT Group. And in the second segment, a conversation lined up with Sandeep Gupta, Vice President and Managing Director, Copeland, India. Now, LIT India is a key ODM and OEM supplier to the world's leading brands. We're glad to have Mr. Prashant Bhatia, co-founder and CFO LIT Group, join us today on this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Bhatia. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It's, it's great to speak to you here today. So to begin with, um, you know, could you provide an overview of the current landscape of uh, the electronics manufacturing industry in India and tell us what are the most promising opportunities within the sector? Absolutely. So, look, numbers numbers always help us take perspective. So, if I, if we think of the key statistics driving consumer electronics, uh, and you look at the overall numbers, we are today at about 100 to 120 billion dollars in India, and it's growing at about 10 to 12 percent CAGR. If you look at the journey from 50 to 100 billion, it took us about eight or nine years to get there as a country, and this. Uh, this next billion will, uh, we think, happen over the, in, uh, in about six years' time. That sort of acceleration indicates what is happening in the industry. And there's a number of factors driving this, which then lead to opportunities. There's the general digitization of, of the country. There is a growth in socioeconomic standards. The per capita GDP is growing. It's at about 2,000, 2,100 at the moment, and it is looking to double, I think, over the next five years. As that happens, demand for consumer electronics is going to grow. And that presents opportunities for companies like us. Uh, we have made some deliberate choices as an organization to focus on, uh, on, on products such as remote controllers, such as payment devices, uh, controller PCBs, that's the motherboard that sits inside, a lot of uh, white goods that we all have in our homes. and. We think that these are the right bets to make given what the macro landscape uh, looks like and how we see it developing over the, over the coming years. What strategies are you implementing to enhance your competitive edge and market presence, uh, not just in India, but also globally? See, that's very interesting, Ritvika. Now, we, we, uh, we think of our strategy using what we call the LIT framework. Our name is obviously LIT India. And uh, to us, what that means is leadership, innovation, and trust. And the way we think about our strategy and what we are doing and ac actioning as a, uh, as a company is uh, we want to be leaders in the products that we are focused on. We really want to uh, not just drive volumes and growth, but also innovation with these products. We have made proactive decisions to invest in R&D to uh, be an ODM and, uh, and, and really be uh, creative in how we design these products. We control the entire life cycle from concept through to production. And we're able to work with our customers to innovate not just on what you see, but also what's inside these products. And I think that, uh, that, that really is a core part of our strategy and our growth plans. And then with trust, what we look to do as an organization is uh, really uh, walk the talk. We want to uh, make commitments and keep them, and, and we go to many lengths in order to ensure that happens. The, uh, the, the, the fundamental feeling of trust is something that we want all of our customers, our staff, and our suppliers to feel when they, uh, when they think of LIT and when they deal with us. Uh, so for us, our strategy is, is organized around these, 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 these three pillars. Now, LIT Group has a strong legacy in manufacturing remote controls and is also now expanding into digital payments. How do you integrate new technologies into your existing product lines and what synergies do you foresee between these sectors? So technology is really the centerpiece of what we do uh, as, a, as a group. We are an electronics manufacturer. Uh, so we, um, 
have this very strong foundation with remotes and the, this, what sits behind that is our legacy in, in precision plastics. Uh, that's where we learned how to, how to manufacture at scale and with quality standards. And uh, that DNA is what is helping us make these evolutionary steps. Uh, so remotes, today, we, as I speak to you, we are one of the largest manufacturers of remotes in the country. And we are innovating quite proactively in that space and trying to solve problems that we see coming. Uh, and, and, and this foray into payments, this foray into payments is something that is, again, strategically very important. Uh, it was very intentful as a move. We got the opportunity and then we leveraged our expertise in engineering, in uh, electronics design, and, in, uh, and, and the strengths that we have in our supply chain in order to build payments products that we think are truly market leading. Sure. And how do MSMEs contribute to the consumer electronics industry in India? What role do you see them playing in driving innovation and growth within the sector? So any, any healthy functioning economy requires a thriving MSME sector. And you know I, I think of economies as pyramids. The, the base of the pyramid needs to be broad and wide for that pyramid to be stable. Uh, so as a country, I think we've done a, a, a very good job of encouraging the MSME sector. I think MSMEs have a very significant opportunity in the electronics space. If you think of what electronics are, they are a series of components that are put together. Each of those components represents a business. And so as India develops its capabilities and its presence in the electronics industry globally, each of those components represent opportunities that MSMEs in our country can, can um, you know, take advantage of and build businesses around. Uh, specifically, you know, there's consumer electronics, phones, smart TVs, uh, Wi-Fi devices, uh, the white goods that we have in our homes. These are all uh, products that today are being manufactured in country. And if you look down the supply chain of those products, there is uh, that there are uh, innumerable number of opportunities for MSMEs to pursue. And as a company in LIT, we, we see consumer electronics being critical and, and we think that there's immense opportunity there for companies like us. With LIT Group's ambitious goal to double its revenue by two and a half times by FY25, tell us what are the key growth drivers that will help you achieve this target? So as a company, we, you know, what you see today, and, and you refer to some stats there, uh, the, the, what's happening today is the result of decisions that we made uh, uh, yesterday, or what, what, uh, figuratively speaking, right? There, there's some important decisions we made to do certain things and not do certain things. And that is what has led to the creation of capabilities and performance that you are seeing in the numbers today. The drivers of this are, as I said, key decisions we've made to be an ODM, to build those capabilities, to have in-house R&D, uh, to invest in infrastructure and machinery. Uh, we have SMT lines that are rolling out in our new factory in Noida. And uh, you know these are important bets, strategic decisions. Uh, backed by demand and backed by what we are hearing from our customers and backed by our desire to own more of the value chain. This is how we are driving this growth. Uh, other elements in terms of go-to-market, uh, we, we are doing a lot in terms of positioning ourselves as a reliable partner for high-precision goods, high-precision electronics. And uh, that is helping us as we expand into international markets. We have an eye on Southeast Asia, on Africa and the Middle East, and are actively in those markets today, as I speak to you, uh, in very, very good conversations, where we are able to leverage the strength and the foundation of our base in India in order to grow globally. As an experienced entrepreneur with a track record of scaling a business you know, into new verticals and markets, what advice would you offer to Indian entrepreneurs aspiring to make a significant impact on the global stage? Uh, for us, um, it is important to solve a problem that matters. It is important that it's a large enough problem and it's important that it's a problem that we have some unique capabilities uh, to put to work in solving. Uh, so that's, that's one side of it. The second leg for us is innovation and, and being innovative in solutions that we design, being innovative in how we operate our business, being innovative, innovative in how we engage with our customers and our suppliers. Uh, so designing solutions to day-to-day -day challenges that come up, uh, making strategic bets that, uh, that, that build moats for the business and give us competitive advantages. And uh, lastly, uh, you know, doing all of this with passion. 
I, I think it's important for an entrepreneur to be fueled by real passion for what they do. Uh, this is fuel that helps not just in the good days, but more importantly in the bad days, uh, because challenges do come. We've had plenty as founders of this business, and having that uh, that real desire and uh, to to address the problem you are addressing uh, is it only comes from passion, and that that's how that's how we think about our business, and that's why we think we are we are progressing the way we are. Um, if there is some advice I'd offer, I would I would go back to uh, the point around fundamentals of a business. Uh, I, I, I'd really recommend that entrepreneurs remember that uh, you know uh, the revenue is, is 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 just vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is reality. And if you forget those fundamentals in pursuit of numbers, then uh, businesses do suffer. Fantastic. Uh, looking ahead, what is your vision for LIT Group's role in the evolving consumer electronics market? And what future developments or expansions are you most excited about? With us, uh, I, I mentioned our uh, strategy framework, right? LIT, Leadership, Innovation and Trust. And, and I really want us to stay true to that strategy as we scale. Often you hear of businesses that have grown larger and have uh, sort of grown away from their roots. So. My desire is that as we build the company and, and uh, our team, uh, we continue to stay true to that every day. We, we come in hungry, we solve problems, and we, uh, we look, to, look to excel, give that sort of 11 out of 10 every single day. Um, that's, that's an important philosophy, if you like, that I bring to work and that, that I want our team to bring to work every day, and I know they do, because we built a very strong culture internally. The, uh, position we've occupied as an ODM, which is an original design manufacturer, we uh, have made investments in capabilities that I think are going to uh, bear fruit and are bearing fruit. Uh, it's allowing us to innovate on products in a way that I think will, will, will move the markets that we're in. Uh, as an example, with remotes, we now have a remote that is batteryless. Uh, you know, we, we've been able to design with our engineering expertise a remote that will operate without batteries. Uh, on payments, we have created a device that uh, we call the all-in-one, and it'll do QR code payments that we're all familiar with that we see all over India today. Uh, uh, but it will also do card payments, and it'll do those two at half the cost of a traditional card machine. Um, and that's again come from our frugal engineering, our disciplined approach uh, towards execution, and our desire to be better every day. Uh, so so th those 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 product those products as they come online, I think will will be a key driver of our growth, and uh, they are things that really excite us as I as I speak to you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Bhatia. It was a pleasure to have you on the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Really appreciate this opportunity. It's time for a quick break here. On the other side, we are focusing on the HVACR industry, bringing you a conversation with Copeland India. Stay tuned. Welcome back to IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. In this segment, the spotlight is on Copeland India, a global leader in sustainable heating, cooling, refrigeration and industrial solutions. Listen in. I'm now joined live by Sandeep Gupta, Vice President and Managing Director, Copeland India. Thank you so much, Sandeep, for being with us today. Thank you, Ritika, for having me on your show. So I want to kick this off by asking you to tell us, how do you see the current landscape of HVACR industry evolving in India? Uh, what key trends are driving this growth? The HVACR industry is you know, going through a great time. It is you know, facing tremendous growth. And this is accompanied by you know, focus on sustainable solutions, very strict energy efficiency standards, and you know, investments in electronics and controls. And this, you know, growth is coming in various sectors like residential segments, coal chain infrastructure, you know, which is bringing you know 
I mean, food from farm to, to the marketplaces. It is, you know, I mean, the growth is happening into, I mean, new segments like the new, I mean, the new trains, Vande Bharat and metros. It is come happening in data center spaces. So it, it's, it's a significant, you know, uh, I mean, growth which is happening across many different sectors. Sandeep, can you share uh, Copeland India's investment plans to expand manufacturing operations? How does the company plan to increase local manufacturing capacity, uh, you know, contributing to long-term job creation and, uh, in fact, even skill development? Copeland is very excited to bring in 500 crores of investment into India. It is being done in three parts. One is setting up an environment-friendly leading technology of scroll compression manufacturing. This the other thing is it is expanding is you know some of the new product lines and the third thing is it it, it is investing into new engineering center r d labs with very advanced technologies these labs will work on low gwp refrigerants and even natural refrigerants like co2 how important is the indian market in copeland's global supply chain and what key steps are being taken to increase india's integration into the global supply network india is an important part in copeland's global supply chain the current manufacturing facility itself exports to uh, countries in you know far east of asia in middle east to the african continent and to countries in americas so we are exporting across the globe and that you know makes it a very critical part of you know, copeland supply chain with the current investments coming in we believe that our customers will get access to a reliable supply chain and industry leading solutions for sustainable technology and uh, our you know the engineering centers which we are going to build up here they are going to provide solutions in areas of electrification, in areas of cold chain, refrigeration, in areas of uh, air conditioning of newer segments of trains, e-mobility, etc., to customers across the globe. In light of the government's push for Atmanirbhar Bharat, uh, tell us, Sandeep, what opportunities do you see for MSMEs in this sector and how can they partner with Copeland to build a stronger local manufacturing ecosystem? Copeland India currently, you know, we source about more than 90% of our material locally. And more than 90% of them are MSME people. And uh, with the current, you know, government focus on Aapnirbhar Bharat, government is providing a lot of support on skill development in terms of credit enhancement, financial support, in terms of labor loss and practices. And while the government is doing its stuff in supporting MSME, infrastructure and space, Copeland is you know, working with many of our vendors to improve their manufacturing processes, set up their engineering teams, set up new call, I mean, quality processes from them so that they become an important part of our you know, uh, Copeland supply chain. And many of them, we aim that they will become part of global supply chains of you know, other Copeland manufacturing facilities as well. So as a global leader in climate technologies, how is Copeland prioritizing sustainability and climate innovation? Can you perhaps elaborate on the R&D focus areas that are driving sustainable solutions for local and global markets? See, uh, Copeland is uh, working a lot on, you know, electrification of energy transition, especially the heat pump, you know, the sector which is, you know, coming up in a big way. Copeland uh, scroll compressors are, you know, the the leading uh, solution, you know, in, in, in that, you know, uh, space actually. And uh, other than electrification in air conditioning, we work with low GWP refrigerants, natural refrigerants, and which help us provide environment friendly, you know, uh, solutions. We work a lot on improving the cold chain infrastructure because we know that a lot of food gets wasted and if we can protect uh, this wastage, we get, you know, uh, we benefit a lot on the environment side as well. And, you know, some of Copeland's businesses, they extract methane from the waste and, you know, use it as biogas for heating, you know, either heating the home or residences or even providing power to them. So, 
you know, Copeland is, you know, a very environment oriented solution provider in the HVAC industry. So how does Copeland balance its legacy of over 100 years with the need to remain at the forefront of sustainable technology? See, Copeland, you know, we have a very strong vision of providing sustainable solutions by improving life and protecting the planet today as well as for future generations. And I mean, the company has stayed focused on you know, people on performance a lot. And uh, the, the basic, you know, the, the framework which, you know, Copeland works on, you know, it has a value system which works on, you know, uh, performance, partnership, reliability, innovation, excellence, respect of people. So, you know, a very strong, you know, ownership culture is there in Copeland overall. And, you know, we are absolutely focused on providing industry stewardship, industry leading technologies over such a long period of time. And fundamentally, I mean, this framework, you know, help us stay focused on performance a lot. Right. And what lessons can Indian businesses learn from Copeland's journey in expanding its global presence? How can Indian companies, especially in the manufacturing sectors, position themselves to compete and succeed on the global stage? I mean, like Copeland, companies should have a, a very strong vision, a culture which is, you know, which has an ownership mindset and, you know, have industry leading technologies. They should have a strong mission statement which, you know, puts people first. And it was a lot of, you know, focus on performance of the businesses. And they should go wherever their customers go. So Copeland has, you know, benefited by, by providing, you know, our customers very differentiated technology. And wherever they have gone, we have gone along with them. Well, it was good to have you on the show, Sandeep. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks a lot, Ritivika, having me on your show. And it's very exciting times to be here, you know, here. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of IDFC First Bank Presents, Leaders of Tomorrow Season 12. We hope you enjoyed the conversations. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.